righteousness, righteousness will give him his wings. The Prince of Peace. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. The one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. The Ancient of Days. Shaddai, Jehovah Rophaka, Jehovah Rohi, El Rohi, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Mekideshke, Jehovah Sikeno, El Elyon. We bless your name this morning. Thank you for your loving kindness. Lord, as we approach your word this morning, we approach reverently and humbly. And we pray for revelation knowledge. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name. have our seats majestically in God's presence. The topic um, before us this morning is basically the theme of the month, Joy Everlasting. Joy Everlasting. And I don't know if you're excited as much as I'm excited. Uh, joy. 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 I want you to look at your neighbor and say joy. Joy. Say it until you mean it. Say joy. 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 Shout it, joy. Uh, Paul said, if there's nothing that distinguishes us from uh, the world, he said, we are of, of all men most miserable. Ah, uh, but we're not miserable. We are beings of joy. In the presence of God, there's a fullness of it. Ah, there's a fullness of it. So, how can, you, how can you measure the life of a Christian? They can measure their life by their joy. By the joy that exudes from them. Ah, no. We're not... <laughs> you know, our journey starts on the way to the cross, but we don't end at the cross. Ah, we don't end at the cross. There's a resurrection morning, right? The disciples were sad. Uh, Mary, they went to the tomb and they saw that the, uh, <laughs> when they got there, where is our Savior? And when he appeared, imagine what would have happened in their hearts. He said it. He said he was going to be killed and on the third day he would rise. Imagine seeing uh, it's just like uh, my dad. Uh, imagine I wake up this morning and I see him at my doorstep. I mean, the real him, not a ghost. Oh my. You know, I think, was it last week I was still thinking about him and tears almost rolled down my eyes. And I'm looking forward to the day I'm going to see him again. Uh, joy. Imagine when Thomas. You know, Jesus appeared and, you know, the other disciples saw him, but Thomas was not, was not there. And he was like, until I, until I see him myself and I put my, 
by hands into the, the, the holes in his hands. Imagine, imagine what was brewing in the mind of Thomas. Immediately he saw Jesus and he said, touch, touch me. The joy, the joy. First Peter chapter 1 verses 8 to 12. I'll, I'll read from um, the Amplified Version. First Peter chapter 1. Verses 8 to 12, and I'll read from the Amplified Version. I, 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 I don't want to read the King James, so I'll read from here. It says, without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not even now see him, you believe in him and exalt and thrill with inexpressive or inexpressible and glorious, triumphant and heavenly joy. At the same time, you receive the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The prophets who prophesied of the grace, that is the divine blessing, which was intended for you, searched and inquired earnestly about this salvation. I want that to sink in a little. It says, the prophets who prophesied. You know, you, we have an example of prophets who prophesied, right? Isaiah prophesied, isn't it? But he never met Jesus. Ah. They prophesied about our salvation, but they didn't get it. It says the prophets who prophesied of the grace, the divine blessing. What are we enjoying today? Grace. The, 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 the prophets of old did not encounter grace. They were in the era of the law. But see, he says what? The prophet who prophesied of the grace which was intended for you, for us, searched and inquired earnestly about this salvation. They wanted to know what is in it. What is in it that we are prophesying this. We know God said he would do this, but what is in it? They wanted to know. It didn't end there. Verse 11. They sought to find out to whom or when this is to come. Sorry, this was to come. They sought to find out. They wanted to know to whom. Who are, who are those that will enjoy this grace? And when or when this was to come. When will it happen? Which the spirit of Christ walking within them was indicating when he predicted the suffering of Christ. And the glories that should follow. Uh, sorry, I didn't write the whole thing down. So let me just um, um, read from here. First Peter 1, 8. So let me read the last verse. Or oh, 12. It was then disclosed to them that the services they were rendering were not meant for themselves. Ah. Imagine, you know, the Bible says the, the husbandman is what? Is the first particle of the fruit, isn't it? But imagine they did not get to enjoy what you're enjoying now. They sought for it. They said, the Bible says it was disclosed to them that the services they were rendering were not meant for themselves and their period of time. But for you, for I, for me, it is these very things which have now already been made known plainly to you by those who preach the good news, the gospel, to you, by the same Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Into these things, the very angels long to look. You know, the angels did not even see it. The angels wanted to, they wanted to spy into what we have now. But don't forget what Peter said. In verses 8, he said what? He said what? There's a joy unspeakable. That is what we're talking about. Please go to verses 8 so that they will see it. Verse 8. Verse 8. Whom have I not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. I don't know why we come to church and you carry the burdens you face 
all over yourself and you're not excited. This was something the angels wanted to see. They could not see. This was something Isaiah, as close as Moses was to God, he didn't see it. He didn't see the grace you're enjoying now. And Peter summed it all up and said what? He said it is joy unspeakable. It is something that you cannot fathom. It is unspeakable. You can't, you can't flesh it all out. Because the same Isaiah chapter 12, Isaiah was saying, prophetically, let's open Isaiah 12. Isaiah 12, verses 3. Isaiah was saying, he said, Therefore, with joy will you draw from the wells of salvation. Go to the next verse, verses 4. To let you understand that it was a prophetic thing. He said, "What in th and in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord. You shall what? Call upon his name. Declare the, his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Which name was he talking about? The name Jesus. Isaiah was saying here, before you and I were, were, what, were, were giving birth to, before, before things got to this point, he said what? He said, with joy. At that moment, what, what, will, what will happen? He said, with joy. You will draw from what? From the wells of your salvation. The salvation you have obtained now. So is it not a shame that you see an average Christian come to church and all they are thinking about is, what am I going to eat? I know, yes, babes will think about it. But if God opens the eyes of your understanding and you see what Ephesians, what Paul was talking to the Ephesian church when he said, the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints. Then you understand that there is a joy that you should carry. Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God is not what? It's not meat and drink. It's not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is what? Let me read it the way the Amplified puts it. It says, after all, the kingdom of God is not a matter of getting the food and drink. But instead, it is righteousness. That state which makes a person acceptable to God. And heart peace. The peace of the heart. And joy in the Holy Ghost. It is not because of the food you put on my table. No. It is not because of what I'm passing through now. I mean, I, mean, some, I, I don't know. Many of you would have been looking at me. I, 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 but you know one thing. Don't pity me. Ah, because I'm not, a, I'm not an object of pity. I'm an object of what? Joy. I'm an object of what? Joy. Take a look at yourself. And see that which Jesus said in Hebrews 12, verses 2, when he said what? He said, looking unto what? Jesus. Paul said what? Looking unto Jesus, the author, and what? And finisher of your faith. Who for what? The joy that was set before him. You know, those who have joy, they don't look down. They are gazing at something. There's a looking forward. They are not seeing the situations around them because... When you see a sad face, where do they look? They look down. But when you see a face beaming with joy, where do they look? There's a gaze. Even though Jesus was going to the cross, I don't know how many of you have seen the Passion of the Christ. There was a particular place when his mother came to him. And he had a brief moment. And he saw the mother. And he looked at the mother and said, he said, mother, he said, I behold, see, I change all things. And he carried that cross at that moment. It was painful, but you know what he was looking at? He was seeing the joy of you and I being sons. Ah, you don't get it. He was seeing man being delivered from our present predicament. And then you come to church and you put your problems before you and begin to look down. No. The Bible says the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Joy. And you know one thing. I've always said it. 
you cannot frequent the throne of grace and come out sad. It's not possible. There are some certain attributes that God has. There's a peace that is, you know, when there's, when there's, when there's joy, there's peace. It's not about what you're going through. That was what Paul was saying in Philippians chapter 4 when he said what he said. He said, be anxious for nothing. Then he said, when you make a request known to God with what thanksgiving, what did he say will happen eventually? He said what? And the peace, and the peace of God will garrison your soul. Those who are joyful are always peaceful. Yes, they are always peaceful. They're not, it's, it's not about, it. I don't know. <laughs> Whether the country turns upside down or it does not, there's a joy that carries you on. Because we are not moved by what we see. We are only moved by what? By the word of God. Romans 5, 3 to 4 says, Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that pressure and affliction and hardship produce Patience and unwavering endurance. Do you know we are rather to glory in tribulations? Ah. I don't care who says. I don't care where it is coming from. You can never find someone who gets into the presence of God fall into depression. It's not possible. It's, it, it, they, don't, they, they can't walk hand in hand. Because David was saying, one thing have I desired, that will I seek after, isn't it? He said what? When you enter God's presence, there's a beauty to behold. He said, to behold the beauty of his holiness. How can you behold that beauty and come out sad? The beauty that the angels want to see. You know, you know not all angels are privy to the presence of God. Ah. But you and I, we walk in and out the way we want. That was why when Paul was talking in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, he made it clear. He said there were times when in, in, he said in shipwreck, he said there were even times he despaired of very, the very life of, of, of itself. But you know what thing he said? He said what? He said those things did not shake him. Huh. Those things did not what? They didn't shake him. I don't know how many of you have passed through what Paul passed through. I mean, I don't know how many of you have been passed through to escape with a basket down from some skyscraper. I don't know how many of you, your life has been, I don't know how many of you have tried to run and they are trying to butcher you or kill you for the sake of the gospel. But yet, because of the very little food you can't get to eat. Paul said in much fastings, right? Well, you go, you go without food one or two days and you're already shouting, you're already complaining. There is a joy that aligns itself with those who follow, follow God. Because the Bible says in Psalm 16, 11, it says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence, there's what? There's fullness of joy. Not, not half. There's a fullness of it. And in your presence, there's what? Uh, and your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. For, forevermore. It says, as I wrote it, I said, there's something about joy that makes it thrive in pain and suffering, in tears. And for those who are more matured, there's a smile you will see rather than, you know, when, when a baby cries, when you see them going through stuff and they are trying to, but when you see somebody who is matured in Christ, you see the smile on their face. And that was what happened when Jesus was about to go to the cross. Uh, he looked at the disciples and the Bible said, after they took the last supper, they sang a hymn. He was ready to go to the cross. Even though the pain was there, he was ready. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He was always looking up. Joy sets the fact. Joy rests in the, sorry, joy rests in the fact that it knows that God will always make a way. When God told Abraham, go and sacrifice your son. The Bible said Abraham was convinced that even if I kill this boy, if I kill him now, I'm going to come back with him. That was what he told his, his servants. What did he say? He said, 
we are going yonder. Me and the boy, we are going yonder to one what? Make sacrifice and we are coming back. He said, we are coming back. This was somebody God said, go and kill your child. He said, we are coming back. He was convinced that if God says I should go, he will bring that boy back alive. That is what joy does. Hence, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Ah, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's not about the money you have in your pocket. Ah, as I end, I was, uh, I, I stumbled up uh, uh, to a video yesterday of uh, Bishop Abioye of Winner's Chapel. He said when he married, he said he had just one pair of shoes. And that shoe, the mouth had opened in front. He said he had to take it to the organizer herself. Not after using normal shoemaker. He said they had, they had to pan a bit the shoe totally so that, you know, it won't open again. And he said he had just one, he had a three bedroom. Uh, one was, the living room was a church. One room was the office. One room was the family, where the family stays. And he said, what well, he said, he said in all that, he said he was always beaming with joy. I don't know how many of you have seen Bishop Oedipo in his old clips in his, when they started the church. You see the way he preached with joy. The same way he preaches now, you see the same way, was the same way he preached back then. There's a joy. It's not about what you see, but what, about what, what you what? Project. Those who have faith, those who are in God, are always joyful. Let's rise up on our feet. Joy. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Say, Father, fill me with joy. Ah, or rather, instead of praying that because that's not, that's not scriptural. Say, Father, I draw from the wells of salvation with my joy this morning. I want you to literally look within yourself and begin to draw and begin to laugh at the devil. I mean, somebody who is joyful laughs at the devil. Ah, can you begin to laugh at the devil? Laugh at the devil. Laugh at the devil. Laugh over that situation. Laugh over that situation. Ha, 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 ha. You have to learn to, you know, each time I watch Kenneth Higgins preach and he laughs all the time, sometimes I just laugh at the devil. Ha, 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 ha. You look at the situation in the face and you just laugh. I want you to begin to laugh at your situation now. All those things that you feel has no solution, begin to laugh now. I mean, be, be, begin to practically laugh now. Ha, 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 ha. Laugh at your problems right now. Begin to laugh and confuse the enemy. That is your prayer point. Begin to laugh now. Begin to laugh at the enemy. Begin to laugh at the enemy. Ha, 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 ha. Choir all over to you. Begin to laugh at the enemy. Laugh at your problems. 